Ah, oh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, the H8 has vanished for a moment, as you can see. Uh, I'm struggling to clean the workshop here, so it had to disappear for a little bit. Believe it or not, I, uh, I did clean myself very thoroughly before I started preparing for this project, yet, uh, I'm already filthy again. I guess that's what happens when you clean up filthy equipment. I didn't get. I need to. I need to write some disc images for for a guy, and um, I didn't drag the Prolinea back out, nor did I drag out the uh, the H150, um, because I've got this grease weasel that I've never used, that I bought uh, several months ago, and never got around to um, to messing with, that I conveniently found while I was cleaning up the chaos here. So, um, I want to get this thing going. The, the Grease Weasel is just um, an STM32 based floppy drive controller um, that lets you plug uh, old floppy drives into a modern computer via USB. Now, it's it's not a regular floppy controller, though. It's a, it, 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 you can't mount them as file systems or anything like that. Well, I guess you could if you wrote a driver, but it would probably be kind of slow because um, these things are specifically made for flux imaging, uh, which is like reading the raw magnetic transition off of the magnetic media regardless of the disk format. So that means, theoretically, um, that you can write like GCR encoded disks with a, a, a PC MFM floppy drive because, I mean, flux is flux, right? So, we'll see. Um, that means that I could potentially write um, Apple II discs with a PC floppy drive attached to the grease weasel, which would be a hell of a lot more convenient than sucking them over a serial cable. I got some, some disc drives here too. A couple of five and a quarter inch disc drives. These are both um, what are they? Mitsubishi drives. One of them is a double-sided double density 360k drive. The other one is a double-sided high density 1.2 megabyte drive. And I've got a 1.44 megabyte high density uh, three and a half inch drive. So, um, so anybody um, watching this probably realizes that you can write both um, high density and double density um, discs in a three and a half inch disc drive, and it just and it just works magically, um, which is great. We can write uh, both 720k and 1.44 megabyte discs in the same drive, and they will function as we expect when we put them in the actual old computer. Such is not the case with five and a quarter inch um, disk drives. The um, 360k drives, the double sided double density drives, have half of the tracks that the uh, high density drives do and they also run at an entirely different speed. Uh, so, you can write um, a disk image, a 360k disk image out to a 1.2 megabyte disk drive and most of them have speed control so they can slow themselves down and it'll magically work. But the track width is still only half of what um, you would find, <coughs> what you would write with the 360k drive. And um, the way the Grease Weasel tries to get around that is it magnetically erases the, um, the nearby track when you're writing du double density uh, five and a quarter inch discs in a high density drive. And that um, supposedly is good enough for the discs to be readable in standard 360k disc drives. Nice gentleman on the internet, um, who probably doesn't want his real name used, uh, sent me a bunch of floppy drives. Um, so I didn't previously have any high density five and a quarter inch floppy drives, um, and I certainly still don't have any um, high density five and a quarter inch media. So I think I'm just going to put a I'm just going to use a double-sided, double-density drive because that's all I'm going to be writing anyway. Um, so, hopefully, hopefully that will be good. We'll set the high-density drive back here out of the way. Uh, and if it turns out that I need it in this enclosure for some reason, then we can put it in later. It'll be fine. I didn't realize there were going to be high-density disk drives uh, in with these, or I would have looked for a three-bay enclosure, because the Grease Weasel, you know, it supports Shugart 
disk drives like you would expect, so it would be perfectly possible for me to use three disk drives um, on the controller, but um, unfortunately this, uh, well, I, you know, fortunately, it, you know, I've got this old um, external SCSI enclosure uh, that has two five and a quarter inch external bays on it, and I figured I would just mount the discs in it and then drill a hole in the back of it for the USB cable to plug in and leave all the SCSI stuff in there because maybe the next guy will want to turn it back into a SCSI drive after I get mauled by a bear or something and then I'd have a nice little external floppy drive enclosure thing to, to write discs with. I don't know where we want to mount the grease weasel. I was thinking like if I mounted it kind of here but that doesn't really clear the that doesn't really clear that thing. It would mount here very well, but there isn't really anything to attach it to. Uh, I guess I could just kind of hot glue it in there. Now this drive, as you can probably not see since I didn't have the camera running when I stuck it in there, this drive, as you can see, has a termination resistor pack installed, and I am curious as to what the value of that termination resistor pack is because if it is too low a value, like 150 ohms, the grease weasel may not be able to drive it. I do not know what it is. Let us find out with a tool, an extra tool, not the tool that's talking, the tool that isn't talking. 300 ohms. It does not say 300 ohms anywhere on it, but that's good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the grease weasel will be able to drive that, and there's probably very weak termination in the 1.44 meg drive as well, but it's probably not sufficient for the five and a quarter inch disk drive's termination. So we shall reinstall that resistor pack. Very good. Now, of course, none of my screws are correct. I'll have to go get some screws. I've got this mount a router that we will jam this bastard into. This is, this is for a tape drive. I don't know if a floppy drive will fit. Yes, a floppy drive will fit ish and it is absolutely filthy hang on a minute let me clean it up I had a thought regarding the rating of Apple II discs with PC floppy drives one of the fascinating things about the Apple II disk drive is that the stepper motors are directly controlled by the CPU. Most of it most of it's done in software rather than hardware uh, like it was done on the PC and well most other machines that use disk drives like this. So um, as a result it was possible to um, really do really fine-grained control over the head positioning and you could step like quarter tracks by like um, energizing two coils at the same time and like balancing the, the stepper motor in between two positions. Um, so even if you could write half tracks with a with a 360k um, double-sided double density disk drive, I don't think you could write half or quarter tracks. But if we used a 1.2 megabyte drive with the skinnier head, would it be able to write quarter tracks that would fool um, Apple II copy protection into thinking that it wasn't a, a, like a copied image? I don't know. I shall have to find out from someone who actually knows things unlike me. Well, isn't that pretty? All of the different colors of beige are represented in this exceptionally diverse uh, 
external disk unit, which these disk drives may not even work. I've, the, the power supply may not even work. I've never tried either of these drives. I've never tried this power supply. I don't know. I should have tested this shit beforehand. But, viewers, I am, as you know, too stupid for that. Let us at least test the power supply. Now, a nice thing about this thing is it does have a three and a half inch floppy power connector. Uh, but I closed the case on the wire and jacked up the insulation. <laughs> but it's the ground. It probably would have been fine anyway uh, if it touched the case, right? And we shall try the power button and see. Oh, the power LED came on. The fan came on. That fan is very loud. I can fix that with my... Oh, the fan in the power supply is also very loud. That's all right. If we're going to embrace the loudness of the fans, we might as well go whole hog. All the loudness. All the loudness. Make it happen. Okay, well, the power supply works. Don't know about the disk drives. I have two things to note. One, gentlemen, when you take pieces out of your old hardware, um, put those pieces into the enclosure somewhere so that the next guy, after you get mauled by a bear, um, has all of the pieces. There's nothing more frustrating than getting a grand old piece of equipment than having shit like covers and stuff missing. Re, re, dear sirs, re, re, I say. So let's just stick those in there. That'll be perfect. Let's tilt it up on its face and crunch the, uh, crunch the, the flipperoo on the five and a quarter inch disc drive. Can you see here? Can you see here? Maybe you can see here if there wasn't so much glare. This. This case has a couple of knockouts, a couple of little round knockouts for something that was not installed in the thing. I don't know what those would be for. Ah, perhaps those were for audio connections for a scuzzy CD-ROM or something. Um, phono plugs or something like that. But here's the type of USB connector that goes to the uh, grease weasel, and it would pass through one of those knockouts if I knocked it out. And if I turn the grease weasel upside down, that port aligns almost perfectly with that top hole. The question then becomes how to mount the grease weasel in a firm yet gentle fashion. Um, because it really does take a significant amount of force to plug a fi and yank out a fi this, this connector. Maybe it just needs it broken in. Mm. <clears throat> No, I'm going to have to mount this good, and I'm going to have to make it removable so that I can get to this jumper block if I need to. And, you know, that hot glue, that hot glue can be pretty badass stuff. It, that might be sufficient if I really slather it on there good. That might be sufficient to plug and unplug the thing without fucking something up. But then we won't be able to get it back out to screw with the jumpers, although the only the only rational reason I can think of to um, ever screw with those jumpers is to reprogram the thing or to um, disable being able to write, which would be dumb because the whole point of this is not to archive disks per se, but to write floppies from images to use on old machines. So. Yeah, let's let's do that. First, let us remove 
the knockout, preferably without bending the case. Can you see, dear viewer on the camera, oh, that, that knockout wasn't in there very toughly at all. Okay, out you come, my little friend. That's better than drilling, I suppose. And then the USB connector. Oh, it fits. It fits like a glove, dear viewer. Where is my glue splooching contraptification? Here it is. It does not stand on its own very well. It's very much like me when I'm cursed of the grape. Um, but hopefully we won't set the old computer shack on fire because I had to use my fire extinguisher to put out a tractor in front of the house and now I have no charged fire extinguisher for Keter for the moment. Just like your old lady, you wait until it starts to ooze before you really go to town. <coughs> Let us wait. Well, she's hot and oozing. Let us do the deed inside of this box, shall we? Let's hope that the glue gun doesn't melt the solder on those headers. I don't think it will. I'm really overdoing it. I should have taken the fan out before attempting this. I cannot reach. That is not going to do the job. No indeed. We do at least have it lined up now. Let us revisit this in a more good way. I'm having deja vu like I've fucked up something like this before. Weird. Now, you dirty rascal, there is no hope of you ever coming out, even if you are supposed to. It is now much tighter when I stick it in. Excellent. So, with that being done, I need to make a cable for it. Um, why am I not just using a pre-existing floppy cable? Well, I don't have very many that have edge connectors on them, and the ones that I do have, I have set aside for other machines. Uh, so I'm going to try to make one. I have, I have some regular uh, 34, I think it is, conductor rainbow cable, which I don't want to use because that shit is ugly as fuck. And I've got this other stuff which is flat on one side, which I have never tried to put an IDC connector on. I don't know how well this will work. Uh, I guess we're going to find out. So, let's just start with the edge connector. Where is pin 1? This is pin 1 on this side. So we'll want the stripe facing that way. Okay. Oh, that, that might actually work. The, eh, maybe. I guess we'll find out. Um, so there are probably as many different ways to do IDC connectors as there are IDC connectors, but I personally like to do them in a bench vise. I think it's the safest way to not fuck something up. Um, well, or shall we say, fuck something up less than you would otherwise. So let's see if we can do this without breaking something. I think these, um, these uh, edge connector ones are a little easier to do without fucking them up than the pin header ones, but uh, we shall find out if it works with this 
funny cable. It hasn't quite popped yet. One side went. The other side's about to. There. Had to coax it. And th these are not keyed, so we have to we have to ensure that we plug them in the right way. Now, let's see. We can plug that in the way that it's supposed to go, and we'll have to have plenty, plenty of slack. Pin 1 is on this side, so this cable will have to come over kind of like this, I believe. Yeah, and then which way does the grease weasel go? The key is down. So pin one's going to be on this side, so it has to kind of come up here, and then the whole cable has to twist uh, 180 degrees before before it plugifies back in there. So let's make it a little longer than we think we have to. Uh, let's cut that with good scissors. We'll kind of fuck them up anyway. Cut that a little longer than we think we have to, because we'll be trimming it anyway. So this comes down, 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 and we'll plug in about like that. We've got plenty of cable there. Let's back it off a little. Make sure we've got plenty of room. And this will twist and go in there like that. We'll push all this down in there. Maybe we'll twist it the other direction. Oh, we'll do something, even if it's wrong. Does that look straight to you? Does anything look straight in 2023? Does it not look straight to me? I can't tell the difference anymore. Mm. Now, you'll be difficult-ish. Oh, don't flop at me. Get in there, you twant. Alright, here we go. Let's fuck this one up, too. Shall we? Let you little twant. All right. Arrow points at the thing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We were just about to fuck it up this way. This way. So we want the flat side next to the teeth -roos. Get in there, you. Well, I hope that works. I guess we'll find out. That blade, there is no good place on that blade. I left my good knife on top of a well casing today. I guess it doesn't have to be trimmed. Oh, that's not too bad. That particular part of the knife isn't stupid dull, I suppose. Well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be pleased if this cable works. This funny flat cable that I've never used before because it was exceptionally cheap and I have a shitload of it now. I didn't realize that it was flat on one side when I bought it, but I was like, oh, 34 pin ribbon cable, it's super cheap, I'm gonna buy it now. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, the general fuckery that defines my existence resulted. Hopefully it'll be fine. That is ugly. That is exceptionally ugly. I love it. Okay. Now you can go down there in front of the fan. <laughs> what could go wrong? Nothing. It'll all be just fine. You can plug in right there. Well, that looks like a metric clusterfuck. I wonder if it will work. Let's push this in and see if the glue comes off. No. Good. That worked out surprisingly well. I'm, if, if this doesn't turn into a shit show, I will be pleasantly surprised. The Grease Weasel 
should be running itself off of USB power. Uh, let's look at the system log and see if there's anything. You see that? I don't think I've got anything too weird up here in my Notion tabs. Looky there, new full speed USB device number 8 using XHCI HCD. Found product Grease Weasel. Excellent. I just realized that I've not downloaded the Grease Weasel software. One moment, please. You know what I forgot to do? Wait, I'm on the wrong camera. Whee! You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to strap this disk drive to something other than DS1 because uh, this floppy drive will be permanently strapped to DS1. Let's move this jumper over here to DS0 and then power it back up. Ah, oh, what a sweet sound. It is loud and proud. Yeah, it looks like you're going to update the firmware over USB, obviously, I should have guessed that. Um, so that's pretty handy, so we won't need to get to that pin header at all, I guess. Very good. You probably can't hear a word I'm saying. The, the, the microphone um, is pointing straight at that loud bastard. We turn that off till we're ready to use it. Actually, we're ready to use it. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, I think I have determined the proper invocation. Let us see if we can read. Read a disc. I don't know if these discs are any good. I, I don't think this is a high density disc. You can't tell with five and a quarters, I don't believe. In the drive with you. Oh, here we go, boys. Let's hope the head's not filthy and is about to rip the shit out of my disc. Let's go back to the monetator and see what happens here. Oh, oh shit, son! I suspect you don't want to sit through all this. I shall return. I suspect that this means it worked. Put the power to the loud bastard there. Um, let's see if we can mount that image up. Uh, let's see here. Might have to specify the format here, I'm not sure. Hot diggity fuck! Ha <laughs> Yay! Yay! Let's see... I think this is a... Yeah, that's a three and a half inch game. Let's see if this one will read. Back to the monetator. Uh, drive one this time. Shall. This is going to be IBM 1440, I assume. Let's try it. Track zero signal absent after seek to cylinder zero. Oh, I don't have the power on. Duh. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. That seems to be working too. Oh, oh, uh oh, bad disk. Uh oh, bad disk drive perhaps too. Ah, ah. I cleaned up the worm gear and, and re lubed it, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, it's not going to fuck up this time. Getting close to the end here. 
Yeah, okay, cool. It, uh, it worked. All right, very good. Now I just have to put it back together. So I did find some other drives uh, that worked. Um, there was this one, uh, which is the wrong color. So obviously, being that this whole channel is all about style over substance, we couldn't do that. Um, and I've also got this, uh, this is a, another uh, Mitsubishi drive that, that matches these, uh, these five and a quarter inch drives, kind of. Um, but, uh, and it's, it's, it's high density. I've got a, a double density one, too, in the uh, H150. Um, but it's got a crack in the plastic here, and um, I want to use this one in the H8 enclosure anyway. So, uh, or at least this faceplate with maybe the uh, double density drive. You have to see what works. I think you can use uh, 1.4 meg um, 3.5 inch drives on that controller. But we shall have to see. I uh, also have this junk drive, which was given to me in a cheesy, like, early 2000s gaming rig uh, that I'd thrown in a shed, and it had greased the consistency of peanut butter in it, and I have dug a little of it out and lubed it a little bit, and I'm going to try to see if I can get this drive working too. It wouldn't do anything. The heads wouldn't move an inch. We shall see what happens now. Well, I've got it moving now, but it doesn't sound super healthy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's sounding a little better each time. Work that shoe out of there. See if we can get a little more lube into it. Let me exercise it some. I shall do a little bit of shell tomfoolery here and see what happens. Well, let's see if it'll read a disc. Well, it's reading now. That must have been all that was wrong with that one, too. Didn't turn out too bad at all. Let's, let's put it up there and in, in its final place and then start doing some things. I've been experimenting off camera with uh, imaging GCR discs, specifically Apple II discs, uh, reading and writing them with the PC floppy drive on the Grease Weasel, and I'm going to have to redo some stuff to make that work, but uh, I'll make another video about that because this one's probably getting too long. All right, I will catch you gentlemen after a while. Thanks for joining.